Well, hello. Welcome to Crappy Hour. I'm Ronnie. That's Ben over there. Ben? Hi, Ronnie. How are you? Good. So, everybody, this is our live bi weekly uh, Bravo Goss show, Bravo News and Goss. So, um, what say you, Ben? What do you want to talk about today? You're very handsome in your glasses over there. Thank you. My my reading glasses, these come from a very exclusive boutique called Target on Sunset and Western. That's the Target where I got yelled at in the parking lot. So uh, that's what I went through to get these. I got yelled at to get these. But um, everything is good. Ben while he was getting those glasses, by the way. <laughs> I was gay bashed. <laughs> these glasses, I went... I went through the worst time of my life to get these readers. Um, but uh, I don't know. I mean, things are good. I'm back from New York. Um, I had a really fun time there. Uh, I did get to go to Chicago musical. Uh, I Love saw it. Ariana perform. She did a really good job. I mean, I don't, I don't think there's going to be anyone. I can't imagine anyone from Bravo doing as good of a job as Ariana on Chicago. I mean, she actually, she can dance. Uh, she can sing. She's a triple threat, and she was, you know, when she was acting, she did the whole thing very well. Like she I, can I never also saw threaten you, which is crazy. She can threaten. I'm watching, I'm watching the Vanderpump Rules uh, screener, and she can actually threaten as well, which I believe makes her a quadruple threat. Yeah, I mean, it was weird because before she came on stage, she actually stopped all that jazz and was like, "If anyone here is following Tom Sandoval, you have to leave this theater." And I was like, You're "That was good to me." I was like, "That was a really strange breaking of the fourth wall." <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, so, so uh, it was really fun. She, she honestly, she did a really great job. I never saw any of the other Bravo people like Candy or Erica or Lisa Rinna on on Chicago. So I would have loved to have been able to compare and contrast and be like, she was the best or she was second best because I love ranking things and ranking things. But oh, um, R.I.P. Well, I wish I could compare everybody against Mary Lou Henner, which is who I saw play the role in Las Vegas. A long time ago. Oh, was she was she Velma or was she um what's her face? No, no, they're all Roxy. Roxy. All the stunt they're castings all Roxy. are Roxy. Yeah, they don't just let anybody or Mama, the street right? play Velma. That's why the Velma <laughs> in there's been on there for thirty years or whatever. They're not getting rid of her. Okay. Velma was great. And the actress who played Mama, she when she was doing like at the end of her big mama song, she was doing these runs that were outrageous. She was like, <laughs> Yeah, um, elevating the mama role, love it. Yes, uh, I did get into a fight. If um, uh, Countess Luann did that show, absolutely not. <laughs> she did not, but she was. It was rumored that she was asked, but I think that well, there she was, started the rumor, right? She that when Luann was like sort of at peak popularity. I mean, she sort of has been at peak, but like when her cabaret thing was really blowing up, she was like, well, I'm not supposed to say anything, but word on the street is I'm joining Chicago, but you didn't hear it from me. And then the producers were like, uh, no, we're not. No, she's not part of this at all. But yeah, like, um, yeah, no, that's that's absolutely yeah. not happening. I was um, the in the second act. The second act was ruined for me a little bit because there were four senior citizens in front of me that got drunk and they started to talk and so like it was really bad so of course you know me i'm not afraid to let out my shisher and so i was like shh and then that didn't work so then i was like shh but by me doing that i empowered the two women next to me who were i think probably from like the bronx or long island to start shushing the two old people that were in front of them and so then, but their shushes were very like, we're, we're New Yorkers and we're shushing you. So they start going, shh. And then one lady goes, excuse me, would you please stop talking right now? We're trying to watch this show. We're trying to watch Ariana. And these old people just looked at us like we're crazy. And then <laughs> the people in front of me, so there was like two in front of me and two in front of the people next to me. So they were handling those two. So they were just kept on talking. And so every time I shushed, they would just keep talking. They were like talking Russian or something. So then I like tapped the lady in front of me on the shoulder, which I probably should not have done because like you can't put a finger on someone, but I tapped her on the shoulder and I go, shh. <laughs> and so her husband turned around and scowled at me. He just stared. And I was, so when he stared at me, I then put my finger up and I'm like, I went, shh, <laughs> I put it into my face. Like, like, don't stare at me like I'm doing something wrong. You're the one talking. Like I paid a few hundred dollars for these tickets and I'm in the second to last row. I paid a lot of money for a shitty seat. Well, you're and not you're going to be angry kid, I'll at tell me. you this much because your answer should have been, she had it coming. <laughs> but she, but this guy's going to, he's going to try to stare me down. 
Yeah. When he's the one ruining it, as if I'm the one doing something wrong. So then, of yeah, course, I was like. Yeah, remember that time those ladies talked through our whole show, and we kept telling them to be quiet. And finally, I was like, take them to the back. Like, I yelled at them yeah. and tried to get them. I, I didn't even kick them out. I just had them move to the back. And then they stayed after and waited oh until they God. were last in the line and then, and then sobbed. Confronted and we us. we had to, like, sit there and comfort them. I was like, I have to comfort you? You little yeah. fuckers. <laughs> you get out of here. <laughs> yeah, and so I was basically, this all happened, and I basically couldn't even pay attention to give them the old razzle-dazzle, because the entire time I was thinking, like, that was great. I shushed them, but then I was also like, now what happens afterwards? Are we, if he says something, is he going to try to say something? Or what's You push a fucker down the stairs, that's what you do. Listen, <laughs> that's why people beat up senior citizens so much, okay? We're frail. We're very, but, very frail. But then I grew to enjoy Push him them. down and hope he doesn't <laughs> drink his milk. <laughs> I grew to enjoy them because they were really drunk and the old lady was like, she just was like talking back to the screen essentially. Cause at one point there's one part in the second act where I think Ariana goes a boom and the old lady goes a boom. And I was like, that was kind of, <laughs> you know what? She's having a great time. Why am I so fussy right now? Let's all have a good time. Okay. Well, experience. you heard it here first. Uh, the review of Ariana in Chicago is that Ben yelled at an old person. So, <laughs> I can't wait till they well, put that on the fucking poster. Okay. I'm like, I have a job to do here. I have to report back to the podcast. And if you're talking, I cannot be experiencing the full Ariana experience as <laughs> Roxy. So, all right. Anyway, so what else is happening? Let's see. So we all heard the news that this network does not learn its lesson. Now, we all know that. Because look how long they kept a lot of these. Look how look how many people they're bringing back from cancellation and how long they've kept some of these people employed. Now, this one's pretty egregious, I think. They are bringing back the Real Housewives of New York reboot, which great. I mean, I think, listen, I think everything deserves yeah. at least two seasons. But I agree. But they are changing nothing. They are changing nothing. nothing. They're bringing back everybody. They're even bringing back Psy. They're yeah. bringing back... They're bringing back Sai, and they showed some kind of like trailer or some something with Sai eating. She's just eating and looking at everybody. Yeah. Like that's still gonna be her thing. She's gonna be eating as her personality. And then um, they announced that Jenna will not have to talk about her relationship. So I get another so, season of Jenna fucking crying about her fucking eyelashes. Are you kidding me? Come on, Bravo, learn a lesson for Christ's sake. Yeah, I, I agree. Oh, by the way, Nikki Tan, thank you. I knew there was a piece of information we had to talk about. Have we talked about Karen's DUI? We should talk about that. But um, anyway, uh, we I... We talked about I, it on Potomac. Oh, we did talk about it. Okay, yeah. never mind. But um, I agree. I think that, like, the fact that there's, like, no changes whatsoever, that's just wild. Because, like... Okay, I know Jenna is like a marquee figure because she's already famous and she's kooky and she is stylish. And I think Bravo's just excited that that like she's part of the franchise. But Sai, I don't get why Sai is there. I don't get why Sai is back. I will be open. I really am going to be open to season two because I know like they probably have learned some lessons. I think they, they, um, I think hopefully they are hungry to like make a splash. But, um, yeah, how do you have the exact same kids? And then that stupid promo where they're all on the phone, they go, hi, is it there? It's there. It's there. It's there. It's there. Roni, it's there. I'm like, get the fuck off my screen. What does that mean? tagline. I don't is know. Slang? I, it's there? I think it's supposed <laughs> to be like. Been, I like when they use really the chemistry slang. there. Like, remember when Kyle learned how to say on fleek? I think it should be like that. They should just be like, not it's there. Not it's there. Not it's there. <laughs> like, what does it mean? Our Real Housewives of New York. It's there. We're that girl. Are you that girl? Are you that girl? We're that girl. It's there. I think they're trying to make a thing happen. I mean, is it is it that is it their way of saying like is it there? Is that is the is the cast there yet? Did they like you know when people say like it's not quite there yet? So it's, like, it's it says there. it's a reference to the Tribeca scene. It was a reference to the Tribeca scene. Well, I like that the they're referencing an up and coming between neighborhood. Jess and Aaron about Tribeca. Guys, if that's your most if that's your most iconic scene, that's sad. That's what I'm saying. Tribeca, Tribeca is, is there. there. Okay. Okay, everybody. Thank you for telling us. That's really sad that it's... we need audience members to tell us what that's referencing. That's how much we love the first season, okay? We write 20 pages of notes per episode, and we still didn't know what the hell that meant. I know. But it was also very much like that promo was very much like Roni, because you have Jenna being like, um, 
is it there? It's there. And then you have Jessel being like, is it there by the Montessori school? And then you have um, freaking Brynn who's like, ah, it's there. Just a little bit closer. A little bit closer. <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so that's that. A lot of people in here are saying, did we watch Vanderpump Villa? I did not. I didn't know that it even started. And we've got too it much to today. cover. And it's it one started of those today. I don't want to watch until we cover it or unless we're going to cover it because I feel like I watch those shows and then we're like, oh, we should cover that. And it's four weeks later and then yeah. I, have to wa I have to watch it again. And I'm not watching that twice. I'll tell you that right goddamn now. I'm okay. not. Yeah, um, it literally premiered today. So we have not had... A single moment to watch i mean we actually did have some time we could watch it but i was i was i cooked lentils instead i felt like that was better for me also like i think i don't know if i can handle two lisa vanderpump centric shows at the i same can't time. that's like a lot of i florals. love lisa vanderpump what are you turning what the hell are one you? at a time one at a time you know that's no. that's i need it I need one Lisa at a time. I need all lisa vanderpump all day long i don't care i want her to star in gray's anatomy i'll watch that shit. i'll, watch I'll tell you it. one thing I've been hearing from a lot of people, and I meant to do this, and I just didn't get around to it. A lot of people are saying, yes, season one of Buying Beverly Hills was total trash. It was an awful show, but apparently season two, it's no. there. Apparently season it's two, there. it's no. there. I won't Everyone watch is show. losing their losing themselves over season two. No, I have not read anybody losing themselves. I'm not giving you that. I refuse. <laughs> I'm bitter about that show. I hate that show's guts. I hope it dies. And those daughters are annoying as fuck. I know we're not supposed to come against the children. Those children are They're not children me, anymore. Okay? I can't listen to them talk. They all do the car they're they do the Kardashian thing, but it's their own brand. You know, where they they're like, you know, if we're gonna be a powerful family, we should have our own stupid voice trademark. And so they all do the Kyle, you know, like the kind of like uh, I can't believe you were dreaming like that. I am listening first. Uh. I can't listen to it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't watch it. I, I will, will not. I will take one for the team. And later this week, I will aspire to watch some of it. <laughs> I'm not. But we can. I would love to watch um, uh, Vanderpump Villa at some point. Come on, please. Please, what? Oh, on, please. I don't Spend know. I don't me. know. It's off. Oh, uh, let's let's think. we could also trade notes. You can watch Vanderpump Villa. I can watch Buying Beverly Hills, and then we can have like a list like um murder, like my favorite murder, where they're like, "Hey, do you want to hear about this murder?" You could be like, "No, hey, do you I want you to show? enjoy the murder with me. I don't want to just tell you about the death and destruction. I want you." What to... do, wait? What do the people think? What do the people think? Vanderpump they're all saying Villa yes, or... of course. They want to watch it. They want. Okay, they want so Villa. they're. They're saying, agree with Ronnie. I agree with Ronnie. Oh, my God. I... It's overwhelming. Well, what else They're is just new? flooding in. What like, else I is I agree new? with Ronnie. <laughs> they literally never do. So what are you talking about? Okay. So uh, what else happened? So Jeremy made a comment recently about his sister, Ariana, on something. Some podcast. What was it? He was on something. Um, I don't know where it was, but he said something. Yeah, he was on something saying something. Isn't this a good gossip show, guys? This is why we don't do this every day. So um, basically, he was saying that he hasn't talked to his sister, and if she doesn't talk to him, then he's going to have some things to say about her. And basically getting, you know, a little thready. And this guy's a thirst bomb, you know. He's... He announced his, he has a, he had his engagement party at Jax's Studio City, if that tells you anything about this kid. Huh. So uh, this is an Us Weekly article where he addresses it. He says, why haven't been talking to my sister and Scandaval are two totally separate things. Jeremy exclusively told Us Weekly. I just want to clarify that I haven't talked to my sister due to me having to stand up for my fiance. His fiance. That guy found somebody to marry him? Is God this picture, Lord. that's not Ariana, I thought that was Ariana, is that Ariana? No. Who? In this picture? Yeah. In the picture that you put on, that's Ariana? Yeah. Standing with him? Oh, it yeah, is, I think yeah, that's sorry. The Look, looking small. That's it, that's it, James's engagement yeah, was a little party while ago, or wherever. pre scandal Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, he cited interactions between Ariana and his fiance Rachel. Okay, well, maybe don't marry someone named Rachel. What yeah, do you how about that? Work on the branding of your uh, of your uh, fiance. Seriously? Okay. Um, I would love to know what happened. Why there was this? Like, I feel like this is when your sister needs you the most, and like, you know, or like your or your sister is rising up, and you're gonna have a falling out with her. 
you know, we have to assume it was Jeremy's fault, right? Because he's the one who already, uh, he already, he already gotten to everyone's bad, bad graces based on that wedding story he had famously. So I already assume this is Jeremy's fault. Yeah, I assume it's Jeremy's fault too. Um, also because he says things like this, there have been some small microaggressive gestures. Oh, really? There were microaggressions where they <laughs> Microaggressions. Turned? We're going to go there. My wow. It's about time someone stood up for the microaggressions that a straight white male with blonde hair <laughs> has to suffer. Yeah. So that's him. I uh, hope they don't make up. He's like, I reached out to her in December saying, I love you so much. I'd love to talk to you soon. And then she never opened it or responded. So shrug. Wow. I tried. By the way, it looks like he's marrying his mother. <laughs> no offense, but this looks, I don't know. There's, it looks like he's marrying James's mother. There's a picture of this, this lady. Oh yeah, I see. She's, she's got some, she sort of looks like a mixture between Bethany Frankel and um, Jules Weinstein. You're right. That is there. She's a mashup face of those two. She's and he looks up. like he is. He looks like he's proposing in a tent city. There, I'm going to say that about is Jeremy. He, so is he, he doesn't look like in he's front doing of, great. I'm just going to say that. Is he standing in front of a vase of baguettes in that one picture? That would actually make me like him. And you're right. I approve of his wedding. I hope these kids are happy for the rest of their lives. They are posing in front of a, va a vase of baguettes. So, <laughs> I didn't even know that was possible. I am the ultimate flip flopper. Okay. <laughs> no matter if it's if it's Ariana and whoever, the choice is between the choice is what the winner is Ariana. In my eye. Like, I'm gonna need a photo of you and Dan in front of some sort of like stack of croissants or danishes or I don't know, just a loaf of some sort in order to move <laughs> the needle back. This pendulum has to swing. <laughs> Our Simone says microaggressions that's called having siblings that's how we communicate thank you that's exactly I went right. on a family trip this weekend to Arkansas um, with my nieces and my sisters and my mom and my dad and we all stayed in a big rental house together and you know uh, at one point my niece said my mom said you're being mean to her and I said that's because I'm her brother and it's not called being mean it's called being her brother so stay out of my fucking business how about that? <laughs> Jesus. It's like these kids have never learned how to love their siblings before. Yeah. Wow. Um, you know, speaking of Ariana, she is, I'm sure everyone has heard by now, but she was announced to be the new host for Love Island USA, which I'm just happy about this, um, mainly because Sarah Hyland was so god awful at it. I don't know how she was cast in the first place. She was so awkward and strange and uncomfortable, I felt, on that show. It made it actually me not want to watch the show. Isn't that so her I'm really vibe, though? <laughs> Isn't it like the I girl? guess you could like, say. And I think she has love because she's with the guy from The Bachelor, the guy, the ba the uh, bartender from Bachelor in Paradise. Um, oh, right. Yeah. Wet, not Wes. What is his name? I forget his name. God, I used to recap mm. that show. Anyway, uh, him. She used to. Be, she's with him, I think, still. Um, Sarah Highland, but she's got. Um, she's got some like an autoimmune disease or something, and oh I don't know. Gosh. She's just like got that vibe. Like she's. Um, she has a lot of um, tired issues, being tired and stuff like that. I read a big article where she was talking oh, about like, the effects of this, which obviously I'm not going to make fun of that. I'm not making fun of it. I'm just saying like she has kind of the vibe of the girl who's staying inside while she's talking about a show of people who are always outside. And that's always kind right. of make me, made me like her because I really like that in a host, someone who just refuses to participate. <laughs> it's like, here's a show about a beach. I'm going to stay here inside and just watch everybody run around in bikinis. <laughs> Then announce I, who's getting who's getting sent home because they're not hot enough. I uh, I think Ariana could be a really interesting choice because Ariana will be like, I'm gonna need all the girls to stand up here, and the boys are gonna choose who they'd like to couple up with. And before you do this, I just want to remind everyone that you guys are all probably lying to each other, and there's no such thing as real love. And check back with me in ten years when you find out that this guy's a fucking cheater. Okay, now who wants to fall in love? Yeah. Um, but you know, maybe that's, maybe that's what it needs. I don't watch that show. Um, but I support it, you know, I mean, get yeah. your, get your check. She bought a $1.6 million home. So had a girl. Whoa. Okay. So um, what else is on here? Um, well, let's talk, you want to talk a little bit of Be Beverly Hills stuff, some Beverly sure. Hills, 
Beverly Hills and Beverly Hills adjacent stuff, pun intended. Um, first of all, Beverly Hills, the latest season of Beverly Hills was like their highest rated season ever, which is sort of surprising. But uh, That's crazy. I, guess, I don't believe it. Yeah, they all, all their housewives posted on their grams. They were very proud. And then there was this. But like, are you sure it wasn't like, hey, we, this is our highest rated season since COVID on Sundays <laughs> between Tuesday and Friday? You know how they do that sometimes? <laughs> They're like, this was yeah. this like Real Housewives of New York. They announced Real Housewives of New York's premiere was the highest rated episode in two years. I was like, oh, wow. Or higher than platforms. the COVID season? <laughs> that's crazy i can't believe that well either way they're all boasting about how well it did uh probably in part because there were rumors about kyle and so um a few days ago kyle richards here she goes again she posts save a horse ride a cowboy or something like that uh, ride a cowgirl Cowgirl, Save a horse, uh, ride a cowgirl. She posted on Morgan's um, Morgan's thing. Instagram, just gay baiting, just some more gay baiting. Kyle, who's also been all over Amazon Live, her new fucking spot where she goes to complain about things on Amazon of all places. It's nothing holy. Do I have to listen to Kyle bitch on fucking Amazon? That's my safe space. <laughs> I know. But she goes on there and she's like, the cast was just inhumane to me. They were they were just inhumane. Like asking about my marriage. I mean, that was subhuman behavior. And then two days later or whatever, she's like, uh -huh, ride a cowgirl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, were you not getting enough attention today, Kyle? Because that's something that's not included on Prime, Kyle. <laughs> Yeah, she really, again, I think that uh, this should be something that we're all celebrating. We should all be like, yay, Kyle is living her best lesbian life right now. She's finally getting to be her real self. She's in love. But I, but the fact that she is, she is, again, at best queer baiting and at worst just sort of hiding like her real life, despite being the champion of being open and honest. It's you know what's even worse than queer baiting? Queer boring. OK, you're pulling all <laughs> queer people into your boringness, you know, and now people, when people meet me and they don't know any other gay people, they think, God, gay people are real bitches. And that's the disservice that I do to the gay community. Once they don't know any gay people and they see you, they just assume we're all boring, which is worse, Kyle. OK, just get out of here. Yeah. You're not when, invited to our table. Out. Yeah. When people meet me, they're like, wow, gay people have very long sentences that never end. <laughs> They're like, wow, gay people really have bad vision. <laughs> well, I didn't know gay people were got so angry at <laughs> older people, old Russians at theater. <laughs> gay people are so mean to senior citizens. Actually, I think that one is not just me. I think that's like gay. I think actually a gay thing is to shush people. But like, you know, like, a, shut up, you bitch. <laughs> shut <up>, bitch. <laughs> um, okay. I do not yell at old people. Um, I will show. I mean, unless except ones that I'm re related. Well, to, I mean, you know, and then I not... only yell because they can't hear me, and I say things like this: "Do you want to die alone, mother?" You know, <laughs> stuff like that. But just because she, you know, she can't hear me as well. Well, I just want to say, I, I only shush people who I feel like I could take in a fight. So old people, it is. <laughs> I I can't take an old person <laughs> in a fight. They'll beat the shit out of me. They've been through wars and stuff. Well, let's okay. see how they deal with me frantically slapping while I squint my eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so highest ratings, Kyle gay, ba gay baiting. And Bette Midler <laughs> made a tweet the Here other day saying something along the lines of, Oh my God, is it too late to join Beverly Hills? I mean, to get paid for fighting? Count me in. You got to love Bette Midler with a current joke. Babe, it's your 13. <laughs> Have you just heard of the Real Housewives for Christ's sake? Do I want her on? Yes. I think she could yes. be the new Dorinda, just getting sloppy and screaming at people for like littering on the freeway and shit. It, she would be wonderful because she is too famous and too wealthy to actually give a shit about what any of these people say. That she would basically be like Rinna in Rinna's first season when Rinna came when Rinna came on to Beverly Hills, it was shocking i remember at the time i was like i can't believe they got lisa rinna because she was like a an already established fam famous person who's on tv this is before it became actually more normal for like established celebrities to come on to beverly hills so it was like that first season rinna was just like whatever this is a job i don't fucking care let me just make everyone mad it'll be hilarious but then of course she got sucked in but i think bat midler could w could she could like do a season one vanderpump you know where she's like i'm just in such a different tier from these women, I, I'll just 
let's just fuck with them, you know? Yeah. So there was a tweet today also. Um, was it by, it wasn't Bravo by Gays. Guys, who was it from? The creamed corn thing. I have to read the comments here. So there was a tweet, like a spoiler tweet. And that's not a spoiler. What's, what's wrong with me today? Okay, I can't think of anything. Um, a blind, a blind tweet where it said, this is not an April Fool's joke. There's a huge divorce coming in the Bravo world. And I'm not going to say who it is, but she loved serving her man creamed corn or something like that. Now, I don't remember who served their man creamed corn, but <laughs> I, I don't think remember... anyone's even touched creamed corn on Bravo. I, that's like all the things that Bravo celebrities like to stay away from, carbs and creams. <laughs> yeah. Um, but everyone's guessing it's Candy and Todd. I can't imagine that it's Candy because, of course, I started falling down that rabbit hole, and Candy is at Legoland right now with Todd. And I feel like oh. she wouldn't take Todd to Legoland if she didn't love him, because where's a perfect more place for Todd to be? I feel like that's the only mm. place Todd can go and just feel at home. You know what I mean? Is it? He feels like tall and in charge. <laughs> Fucking Lego land. <laughs> so and he could also think... uh, use it as a set for his new movie. He's like very quietly shooting something. It's like the past part two, but like it's Drew Sedora having a secret lesbian affair, but like all the sets are Legos. Wait, somebody, they're saying now it's Marge, Marge. from Real Housewives of New Jersey. Yeah, I was Marge, one, that was my Marge first thought. Marge makes creamed corn? I, that I can't tell you, but. I can't um, imagine Marge making the hair of, corn. Well, you know, they show, in the trailer, it looks like there are some issues. There's some, there's Someone some said there's something with Marge and creamed corn. Somebody screenshotted it. <laughs> dun, dun, it? dun. Okay, Ben, talk. I'm going to search Marge creamed corn. See, here's the thing. Like, I feel like the creamed corn thing in a blind if someone's going to drop that, it should be something like iconic that the person has done. I don't think any Bravo celebrity has done anything iconic with the cream corn. Marge Unless just there... had a screenshot. Marge did it. Hey, Sassy. Um, um, Real Housewives. I, okay. I Marge had a screenshot about cream corn. Well, I, I am concerned because when I saw that trailer, I was very concerned about Margaret going down that path. Joe is not happy. Um... You know, she's she, Margaret has had a rough few years on the show, and maybe the roughness is coming from her being unhappy. But also, you know, one thing that was in the trailer, you know, Marge's Jan, Jan passed away, and then Joe says that Margaret hasn't been the same since Jan passed away. So maybe she's like, uh, maybe she's going through it. Okay, so Sammy in the in the comments says Marge had a creamed corn recipe. Oh, creamed corn creme brulee recipe. Huh. Well, there you go. No Who knew? recollection of. Well, I hope that's not true. I mean, who's going to tell him what shirt to wear? That guy's going to be a damn mess. <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, I'm i very concerned about it, about Joe and his seafoam shirts. Like, when will he know when to wear it? He'll probably do it all wrong. <laughs> yeah. How is he going to match patterns? It's going to be crazy. <laughs> Okay, what else is on here? Um, um, Teddy well, versus Wendy was a fun one. Did you yeah, see that? Yeah, that was. Yeah, I just saw that. That's that's wild. That Teddy. If Teddy thinks she can take on Wendy, Teddy's such a dummy. Come on, Teddy. I love Talk it. Talk about creamed corn. That's what. That's that is Teddy's. Talk brain. about creamed corn. That is Teddy's. Or, like Teddy does sort of look, look like creamed corn, right? She's definitely got the personality of creamed corn. Okay. Let's Wait, is there something here. with Tamara and Eddie and creamed corn? Like, I just creamed all over my corn. Yeah, we have sex. <laughs> you can still make me cream my corn, batch. <laughs> How much we're still in love. Okay, so um, Teddy Mellencamp. Okay, so Dr. She's Wendy posted it. a screenshot of her DMs. And it is Teddy saying, Dr. Wendy, hope you're well. Your reunion performance should definitely be taught in Housewives 101. Laughy face. Would you be able to come on two teas in a pod with me and Tamara next Tuesday, March 7th? We'd love to chat with you. Hi, I'm Teddy. And then mm. Dr. Wendy posted that and said, got it. You at Teddy Camp just wanted my attention. Hashtag, hi, Karen. And then like gives a waving hand. Wait, Hashtag, R-H-O-P. Why? Um, wait, but why is Wendy... Is because, there a greater context to this? Why because Teddy and Tamara on that? their podcast, they were talking about the season finale 
And Teddy was like, yeah, Wendy should be paused. They should pause when they should put Wendy on pause or something. So Wendy, Wendy went back to her DMs and got a DM of Teddy asking her to do the podcast. And she goes, oh, really? So you just wanted my attention. Hi, Karen. Well, that was a long time ago so in Teddy's defense. This is how much Wendy <laughs> sucks <season>. sometimes. <laughs> Sorry. Listen, this is how much Teddy sucks take... sometimes. I'm actually on Teddy's side on this one. And yeah, that's I'm on Teddy's side Wendy. about that That's too. not easy to get me on, on Teddy's side, Wendy. It's like, Wendy, we just had to watch a season of you get into a fight about shrines. Okay? <laughs> I think Teddy is in her right to say, maybe Wendy should be on pause. I think, like, Teddy has earned that. Okay? So then Teddy's response is, hi, I'm Teddy. Got what? That I wanted you on our podcast before watching the season. Notice that's when the DMs stop. You would think with four degrees you would come up with something more original than Karen. It's actually not a bad clapback either, I have to say. Yeah, well, I'm not I'm not going to stay on Teddy's side. It was a terrible visit. I hated being there for even a second, so <laughs> fuck off, Wendy. And um, just, You're I in think, the land I think of a lot corn. of people agree with that. Wendy could use a pause. She's uh, Half that Wait, cast could use a pause, let's be honest. Is it possible that Dorit and PK are cream corn? They kind of look like it. <laughs> like PK if you put them together wishes in a bowl, he had the color corn. of creamed corn. He could never. <laughs> so that's my goal, all right? I've spent literal summers sleeping outside in Barbados in the summers. Hoping for that color. <laughs> babe. 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 Let's, how about this, babe? Put me in a bowl with a lot of cream and then just dump the corn right on top of me. By the way, I just saw a commercial that is using Take My Breath Away, and it was sounded like our impersonation of it. It was like, welcome to Pachanka Resort. It was like, take my breath away. <laughs> I forget what it was for. Oh, gosh. Okay, so how so, about we talk about some more Vanderpump Rules news? Yeah, I'm... Let's, I have let's to hand that. it to Rachel. This girl really can just keep it going. I can't believe she's still making a podcast literally about cheating on somebody. And she just shows up every week and records it. Like, she keeps finding new new ways to talk about it um, while still not doing this. I mean, not. I'm not saying she's great. I'm just saying, wow, she, she can keep talking, which to us is very impressive, you know. So uh, Fancy Drew posted today. Rachel's manager does not believe Ariana found out about the affair when his phone call when his phone fell out of his pocket that night at TomTom. Tom. She shares her unpopular opinion on Rachel's podcast. So I listened to this clip. It's her manager, uh, and she's like, "This is not going to be a popular opinion, but I don't really even care what people think. I think that Ariana didn't find out about this because of a dropped phone. I think if you have a partner and you think things feel sus, you look at your partner's phone. That's it. So she must have looked at her partner's phone, and then her saying that he dropped the phone, that is a huge lie. You heard it here first. Now, I don't know who this lady no. is or why she's yelling about this or what her point is supposed to be. So what if Ariana found out in a different way? I don't really understand, like, the accusation she's making, but she's yelling and she's going off. And I do know this much about her. She's a terrible manager because she's yes. sitting here talking to Rachel on a podcast instead of Rachel being on the highest rated show on cable. So yeah. do better, manager. You suck. Ma'am, it's time for you to go back to your shift at Sioux Plantation. I don't know what's going on with you right now. For her to say, oh, like, okay, we saw, we saw the video of the night that Ariana found out, right? And there was footage, like, of filing and cheering. I guarantee that if she had seen this video ahead of time, she would not be at that event, event smiling and cheering. So this lady, whoever she is, uh, she is like, this is this is a bunk theory. It's just, it's also a stupid theory. It's also like, it's like a, who cares about this theory? <laughs> like who cares? Yeah, if, like, who even if she's right, what does this move the needle on for anything? Well, they're saying that she, I guess the point is, uh, if I have to try and work it, like give some credence to this, it would be that she knew about it and she wanted it to be more dramatic for the show. So she pretended she found out about it while Rachel happened to be on Watch What Happens Live. And then it became more dramatic because Sheena was with her to punch her in the face. I mean, I don't know. That, the this the is lengths stretch. that Rachel is going to, to make herself not the villain in this, <laughs> not a villain. It's not Rachel, she's not it's the Bethany. villain. It's Bethany. Don't forget, Bethany is is pulling the strings on this one. This is all Beth. I mean, Rachel's doing some strings, but like Bethany, Bethany is still trying to advance the reality reckoning and take everyone down. And uh, 
it's well, just Brock, it's just such a massive fail. Brock commented and said he can't, he commented on the Instagram post. This was posted on uh, Vanderpump Vanderpod recaps, Vanderpump Rules Pod. Craig over at Vanderpump Rules Pod. Hi, Craig. And um, he posted, "Damn, I would have thought by now uh, Raquel would have gotten a better PR, but apparently her PR just wants to leverage her working relationship for what clout? Don't ever come for Adrian. No, don't ever come for Ariana in this situation. You callous c-word." <laughs> wow. He number signed out the U and the N, but um, wow, he went there. He it's did go there. there. It's there. <laughs> it's, Brock is there. It's there. <laughs> Guys, and Brock honestly, is there. Brock's comment more exciting than almost all of the last season of Roni, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to see Uba take another can of coconut milk. Hashtag truth. Hashtag truth. I mean, I just think that like I I just the Rachel thing, she is she just needs to move on. Okay. This is not your healing. This is not your side of the story. You've told you've told your side. It's out there. It's documented to write a book. But this is, you're just being, you've changed being exploited by Tom to being exploited by Bethany. And now now you're just, have your manager on as your guest. I mean, what's <laughs> what's next? Your building manager? Your, your, is, is it going to be like your Uber driver? Like, who is who is next on this show? She could. The Uber driver knew and didn't do anything to help Ariana, <laughs> which makes Ariana guilty for me fucking her boyfriend. I um, want to introduce everyone to Frenchie. She works at the Hallmark store and I went there today and she sold me a card and I was like, you want to come on the show? And she said, I don't know who you are, but sure, I'll be there. So here she is. Thanks, Frenchie. Have you been following the Real Housewives of Atlanta stuff? First of all, Candy's out, which is crazy. So we talked about that, I think, last time. A bunch of people are out. Candy, yeah, Marlo, Candy. Sonia, uh, Sonia, Sanya. No, Sonia. And, um, uh, now Porsche's back. Porsche's in, but, right, but oh man, Porsche's life really blew up <laughs> when she, she really might be signed. back with Dennis now, right? Maybe, but there. Here's the headline: Simon demands Porsche Williams retain texts with mystery man Kelvin Owusu Ansa. As if the divorce battle wasn't messy enough, now we have a new character to the story. His name is Kelvin. You're probably wondering who is that. Well, we're trying to figure out the same thing, says Reality T. According to wow. Redal Online, the great French publication, Simon has demanded the courts to have Portia retain her text messages with Kelvin, and he wants her to keep text messages from her sister and a woman named Karen McKinney. And her income and financial records. Listen, a man demanding that you keep a filing cabinet. That's a first <laughs> for me. This man just wants organization. That's what he wants. This... This, the temperature is really going up on this Kelvin person. Get it, darling. <laughs> Kelvin. <laughs> Kelvin. That's for my chemistry friends out there. A little, little Kelvin what is humor. That? <laughs> what is it's a Kelvin? A... I'm stupid. You can't make references <laughs> like that to me. I'm like, what? <laughs> Kelvin is a unit of temperature. It's like Celsius or Fahrenheit. But Kelvin is like, Kelvin's like the OG. It's like zero kelvin is like the coldest it like doesn't get any colder than zero kelvin like that's it and everything else is sort of based off of kelvin's kind of like the original <laughs> kelvin's like the lisa vanderpump of temperature wow okay so <laughs> kelvin so does is this insinuating that she cheated with kelvin um i guess uh, so there's always new people coming into Porsche stories yeah, because while Simon leaves us all scratching our heads with his latest court filing, Portia has accused him of violating their prenup. According to their agreement, he was supposed to vacate their home within 30 days of a divorce. But he is he's sent a cease and desist to those filming the next season, and he's saying that she can't film in the house and she can't film the kid or whatever her family stuff in their house, plus demands she turns over passport, texts with producers, and much more. Wow. And Portia saying, Williams Kel accuses a strange husband, Simon, of using the media amid divorce battle. Well, yes. Well, I mean, who would have thought? What's it there for? <laughs> I know. Who would have thought? Um, saying, Kel like, no one knows who Kelvin is, but there's an African sports broadcaster whose name matches the one in the court documents. So, <laughs> this is just, like, the men that have come in and out of Portia's life have been very fascinating over the years. So if it's, she's cheating with Kelvin, this is what happened with his previous wife, Phelan, right? Wasn't she sleeping with the pool boy or something? Man. Something like that, right? 
Do you think this know. is I another think... kind of open relationship type of situation? Because that's happening a lot to this guy. <laughs> just saying. I'm, I... just, I'm just trying to work it out in my mind. Uh, all I have to say is I just I can't believe that Portia and Simon weren't a forever couple, given their storied romance and how they got together. I don't know. I'm I'm intrigued because last I heard, I thought that Portia was getting back together with Dennis. But now that there's this potential Kelvin person in the mix, it's just it's it's wild. And my fear is that she's not going to talk about any of it on the show. That's that's my thing. Is like if if Portia's coming back to Atlanta. I want her to talk about all this stuff and I want her to be like an open book and I'm afraid she's not going to be open book at all. Um, well, I guess time will tell. Um, just in case anyone's wondering how Leah's doing, she fucking loves OnlyFans, okay? Yeah. She went on the Sophia with an F podcast and said she was initially hesitant to join the platform but rapidly realized it was great for her. I fucking love OnlyFans, she said. This is great. It's a wonderful platform where people aren't censored. They don't have ads in their face constantly. They don't have negative algorithms pushing bullshit. I feel supported. I'm making money. I get to express myself. It's fun. I love it. I'm being creative on it. It's dope. Two weeks later, I'm suing uh -huh. OnlyFans for encouraging nudity. Yeah. This is a platform that was exploiting people. You know that's what it's going to be, right? Like, you know that that that's what's gonna happen yes all they're exploiting also, me yeah and also did you hear about um bethany frankel says she was punched on a new york city street in a random attack apparently in new york city there's this uh, a punching epidemic where people are just like going up and punching women on the street which is horrific and bethany says that she was one of the people who was punched is that wild yeah that's crazy what is she saying so she said, um, this is insane because it happened to me a few months ago, but I was embarrassed to say it. And I was on the Upper West Side. Insane. I was taking video of a bakery. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's not laughing at her getting punched. It's just very <laughs> that the setup is not what I was expecting. I 100%, she... by the way, feel like you're trying to set me up with this story. So go ahead. <laughs> no, I just wanted no, to get no, that no. out there. I feel like communication is important. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, so she says that um, um, she yeah that she was basically like punched while she was while she was doing this and that um and then there were some people online who were like oh she's just trying to like hop onto this trend because like there are people going on to TikTok saying i was punched but i don't know i'm not going to actually question bethany on that i i think that like uh she says i i believe that bethany was and that's just absolutely i believe it's, bethany it's would have been on her TikTok immediately going oh my god i just got punched and so I tried to offer the makeup and they said, I don't want your fucking used makeup. And I said, it's not used. Why, does, why do people keep calling it used? I opened it. I opened it. <laughs> um, so that's that, everybody. Thank you so much for being with us. We're going to move over to the question and answer portion of this show. If you're listening to this on audio, love you. Come watch on Instagram Live and we'll bring you up for a minute or so to talk it over um and otherwise we thank you guys for being here bye and thank you for being here with us on youtube everybody everybody on instagram stay tuned and we will talk to you in a couple of mondays 5 30 pacific